as we start talking about electric circuits then, there's a bunch of symbols that you sort of have to know and be familiar with, and that's what this video will sort of discuss. So we start drawing circuits often by drawing their schematics. So we don't actually draw the components as what they look like. Instead, we have symbols for each. Symbol for a resistor is a zigzag line indicating the confused path electrons have to take through the device to just collectively zigzag, given the symbol R for resistance. Of course, capacitor is famous for the parallel plate capacitor, and so the symbol for a capacitance is a capacitor is just two parallel plates. Uh, the voltage, constant voltage in the circuit, indicated sort of like a battery. It looks a lot like a capacitor, but one plate is a bit smaller. This is the positive plate, that's the negative plate. We also have switches, so if you can imagine coming in with your finger and pushing this down, this part here would go down until it connects to this side right here, you'd have a closed switch. So nothing can jump across the closed switch as a way of turning circuits on and off. Wires, of course, represented by a straight line like that, and of course, wire can be joined into other wires at a junction, so you could have a wire coming this way and a junction going this way. And if current comes through the junction, well, it has to decide which way it'll go. And so there's some very specific laws and ideas which allow you to predict when that'll happen. So what we'd like to do then uh, is, given that we have these uh, circuits here, is there's two laws. It allows us to go quite far in analyzing how circuits work once they're built. First is the junction rule. What that sort of tells you here, the junction rule basically tells you that whenever a circuit... Uh, current comes to a junction, the current that goes in is equal to the current that comes out. Okay, That's sort of the situation with junctions there. So it looks something like this. Suppose you have some current coming in here that might be like 1 amp. And it comes to a junction like this. The sum splits off and goes here to Los Angeles. The other splits off here and goes to New York. Well, how do I know how much goes to LA and New York? Well, it depends. But what I'll know for sure, it doesn't have to be this way at any given always, but what will happen is I'll know the total amount that goes to LA to New York must sum to be 1 amp. So if LA is going to get 0.8 amps, New York must get 0.2 amps because 0.8 plus 0.2 is 1. And this is what I mean by current goes in is equal to current out. So the current flows this way in, 0.8 will flow out that way, and 0.2 will flow out that way. So that's sort of the junction rule there. 1 amp in, 0.8 and 0.2 must come out. This is the way it works. Junctions do not store or hide current. They always give out as much as they take in. So if you don't like um, those values right there, you can choose any that you want. L New York can get 0.9 amps out. That means LA is only going to get 0.1 amps out. Either way, it adds to one amp like that because what goes in must come out. And that's the junction rule. The other rule that comes up, 2 of 2 here, it's called Kirch <coughs> Kirchhoff's loop rule. Kirchhoff's loop rule. What it says is that if you sum or sum the voltages around any loop, just choose any loop in an electric circuit and any starting point that's the same as the ending point here, you sum the voltages around a loop, you must always get zero. So let's investigate those two. Let's look at a couple circuits then that use some of these symbols here and use two of the, these two rules here in order to learn some things about how the circuits work. In particular, usually things like how much current is going to flow through a particular part of the circuit. Let's go see if we can take a look at that here. Okay. So what we'll do then, we'll get our first circuit going, probably the simplest one I can think of right here. Looks like this. Let's put a battery here, and let's have some wire that's just going to feed a resistor. Go back around to the battery like that. So I'm not sure if I should go numerical or not. Maybe choose some values in here, but maybe we will. Maybe we'll just choose, uh, since we're used to that in this series of videos, a 9-volt battery and maybe a 2-ohm uh, resistor, something like that. So the question is, how much current then is going to flow around this loop here? Okay, so I'm going to look at it a couple of ways here, just to tie everything together. The first way you can look at it is pretty simply, because it's a pretty simple circuit. If you look here, the very top of this resistor is connected to the top of the battery right here, which is at 9 volts. The bottom of the resistor is connected directly to the bottom of the battery right there, which is at 0 volts. So all told then, this resistance of 2 volts has, 2 ohms rather, has 9 volts across it. So you could get the, the current pretty simply by saying, well, it's just a 2 ohm resistor with 9 volts. I know Ohm's law is I is V over R. So 9 volts divided by 2 ohms. The current must be flowing here. must be 4.5 amps. You'd be correct. A bit more uh, physically intuitive here is like, well, where is the current? I mean, how does it flow and what does it do? Well, it turns out that if you always sort of start at the positive plate of a battery and just start drawing air like this, you, you can't actually think of, this is called uh, conventional current flow. 
and this is the, the flow used in all electronics literature and circuit analysis, is we know the electrons are actually the one flowing, but the state of the education and convention has it that actually positive charges would flow. Now, we know that positive charges don't flow. Those are the ions at the center of the material. That's just the way conventional current flow works, so we'll just join the uh, rest of the world and describe our circuit that way, too. So it turns out that what will happen is a bunch of positive charges are going to start flowing out of this side of the battery here. They start flowing and flowing and flowing. It has no choice about where to go, so it just sort of follows the wire, encounters a lot of resistance here as it zigzags through, and comes back again and goes back in the battery. So it always has to sort of make a loop like this, but of course the loop here is, is exactly what an electrical circuit is. So these circuits always have to make, the, the electrons in a working circuit always has to make a loop. They always have to end up where they started, that kind of thing. And so if you do this, you can sort of label this I once again here. And now you can see once again that difference. There's voltage, there's current, there's resistance. They're not the same thing. Resistance is the property this resistor has. Current is what flows in the circuit because of the power that, or the power supply that is supplying 9 volts of, say, electric potential energy to the system here to push the electrons through that resistor right there. So if you want to look at maybe a different way using Kirchhoff's law, you could say, well, what Kirchhoff's law tells us here is that the sum of the voltage around any loop is equal to zero. So, okay, I can use that here. Let's just start in this loop here. Let's just start right here at the battery. This is where my loop's going to start. So the sum of the voltage is zero around there. So what happens here is I go up across the battery here. I encounter the negative terminal, then the positive terminal. And if I'm like electrons or something like that, that's going to be a, a sort of an electric potential change of plus nine volts for me. Now, if you want to go back to that old example that we had in a previous video, what are batteries here? They're like charge escalators, little stair steps up here that take the positive charges that might be down here at zero volts, might be down here at zero volts, and promotes the charge up to a higher electrical potential state to say plus, here's a little plus charge coming out there at nine volts. That's the way it may come out and join the circuit. So either way, if I'm putting in the loop rule right here, the first voltage I encounter is a plus nine volt. I get promoted up by that charge escalator as I go around. Now, nothing much happens in straight pieces of wire. There's no potential change at all like this. But then what happens is I come through the resistor right here. And what I know about this resistor is I come down and hit this resistor right here, uh, right here is the current, is that I'm going to fall in voltage as I go across the resistor for a couple of reasons. One is I'm approaching the negative terminal of the battery. I must be falling. And the other case maybe is that all those collisions inside the resistor, it takes the, the current a bit of time to get out. Now, it all comes out, but it takes a bit of time to do that. And that delay lag also generates sort of a drop in voltage. In other words, if you're all energetic coming in here, you're all happy and psyched up to, go, to be going all around an electric circuit at 9 volts right here. When you come out of the resistor here, you're not going to be at 9 volts anymore because you got batted around so much and kicked around in there. You and your friends have got lost and maybe you came out first or later or something like that. But when you come out of a resistor like this, you're going to have a voltage which is slightly less than 9 volts. And so that's a matter of well, exactly what is that voltage drop. So that's what it's called across the resistor here is a voltage drop because of all that action it handles in there. And so the amount of voltage drop is, of course, governed by Ohm's law, which is just I times R. So if I subtract the current times the resistance right here, this is exactly the voltage drop I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to witness of my electrons that come through that resistor right there, I times R. And now because I'm completed my loop, I'm back around to where I started again, that's the end of the loop, so all that's equal to zero. This is an application of Kirchhoff's law. Now remember, my goal here is still to find what that current is right here. So 9 volts minus I times 2 is equal to 0. And if I go ahead and solve this for I, I'll get that 4.5 amps again. And that's exactly the same answer we got up here using a bit more intuitive approach there. And that's the name again. So that's an example of Kirchhoff's law in there. So I say, well, this is, this is an easy circuit. And undoubtedly, you just won't have this on an exam. And it's not something that's particularly fun or interesting to build unless you're just turning on a light bulb or something like that. So, of course, you can use the same analogy here with a slightly more complicated circuit. Here's a battery here. Here's a resistor here. Here's a battery here. And here's a resistor right here. So two batteries and two resistors. Let's say this battery over here is 6 volts. This one over here is 9 volts. The resistor up here is 4 ohms. And the resistor down here is 2 ohms. The question is the same. What current goes through all of these devices here? So if you wanted to start, you would be correct in sort of thinking this current is that flow again. So I'll just sort of draw the current. It's coming out of this positive terminal of the battery. So here comes the current doesn't have any choice, has to follow the wire, has to go in the resistor and come out of the resistor, gets batted around in there, has to flow through this battery. Again, no choice. The wire is forcing it to go into a particular direction down here, through that resistor also, back up through the battery here. This is going to be my current. And that's my good current loop right there. So this one here is you just, there is no direct application of Ohm's law. You can't use 
I is V over R at all here. There's just no direct application of that. But what we can use is the fact that the sum of the voltages around a loop are equal to zero. So let's just do it here. Let's start here at the six volt battery and go around the loop here. Looks like when I hit this battery as an electron, I'm going to witness a plus six volt jump in my electric potential as I go up. As I go across the battery here, I'm certainly going to enter at a nice, oh, six volts, but I'm going to get all bounced around in here. It's going to be very unhappy and stuff until I come out with some voltage less than six. I don't know what it's going to be, but all told, I'm going to suffer a drop in voltage of minus the current that flows through that resistor unknown right now times the four ohms. So the amount of resistance here is definitely going to affect my voltage drop. Then I come across this battery, and I'm actually going from the positive plate to the negative plate, almost running down an escalator if I want. I'm going to lose potential. So I would not write not plus 9. I would write 9 as mine because I'm going to lose potential as I come down across that battery. Then I come down around like that, and I'll say, well, how much drop am I going to witness across that 2-ohm resistor? Well, same kind of thing. Minus I times 2 ohms. Same thing. I'm going to run through the resistor now, the 2-ohm resistor with all my current, but I only have 2 ohms now, not quite 4. Now, when I finish coming through this resistor here, I'm sort of done with my loop. I'm back around in my original battery where I started, but I've already accounted for that. So this whole thing is going to be equal to zero here. Let's maybe bring all this together. 6 minus 9 is minus 3 volts is equal to minus 4 times I minus 2I is minus 6I, something like that. And there's my equal to zero there. So I guess sort of get a, um, an equation here, which I could actually use to solve for the voltage now. So... Um, you know, and I think I just made a little mistake there in my thinking right here. These are not these. These are actually um, uh, voltage here. So 6 minus 9 is actually minus 3 volts. I was thinking I was solving for the variable. No, I guess I'm okay then. And I have minus a 6i is equal to 0. So if I wanted that current then, it would be something like um, 3 divided by 6 or half an amp. And there is a minus sign in there because I don't, just the way the algebra works out. So I get minus half an amp. So two things I can conclude here from my half amp. I just saw this algebraically for the half amp there. So two things I can conclude. The first thing is that I found how much current runs through the system here. So this I here, which is running around the loop here, is going to be 0 0.5 amps, or half an amp. Now what does the minus sign mean? The minus sign just means that when I chose my current as coming out of the battery and traveling clockwise like this, I chose the direction wrong. But it's okay to do that. The current is going to either be in one direction. Either it goes up through the battery or down like that. It can only be clockwise or counterclockwise. So the fact that this sign is negative like this tells me that the actual current must be counterclockwise through the loop. So if I was going to draw current in the loop here, it would actually be going around like that. So that's what I learned by doing this Kirchhoff's law analysis of this particular system here, is I have the current value now, and now I know the direction of it as well. I was wrong with the direction. So there's one other thing that we can calculate now that we know that the current in it is 1 amp. And it has to do a little bit more alphabet soup with some of this electronics here. So we have, we have Ohm's law, which is V equals IR, but also there's something called power, which is current times voltage. And if I combine these two things here, I'll get power as I squared times R. Now power here, the reason why power is interesting, because this is sort of like the heat that we feel. Like if we had a circuit running like this and I touched the resistor or one of the batteries, they might feel hot because of all the current going through them. And that's exactly what power is here, which we are now in a place to calculate. So say the power running through the 4 ohm resistor there would be I squared, which is 0.5 squared times R times 4. And the power through the 2 ohm resistor here, well, the current's the same down there. It's still the 0.5 amps, but now it's not a 4 ohm resistor. It's a 2 ohm resistor. So times 2 like that would give us that power. So I know that 0.5 is 0 0.25, 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25 times 4, so the power here is going to be 1 watt. I get 1 watt of energy being dissipated through this resistor right here. And for this one down here, once again, 0.5 squared is 0.25 by times 2 here, that's going to be half a watt. So I get half a watt of power going through the other one right there, flowing through it. So the top one's going to get hot more or less twice as fast as the bottom one is, and that's where electrical power comes from. And of course, the units of that are in watts. So there you go. There's a couple of examples of Ohm's Law, which is often uh, probably too simple to use, but we always have to back up and use something like Kirchhoff's loop rule, which says to go any loop around a circuit, the sum of the voltages will be zero. So there you go. And we may have a little power calculation in the end.